Ahmad Irevani, Ayetullah and President of the Center for the Studies of Islam and the, the Middle East. You are coming from Washington, D.C. Welcome to our media box. On the occasion of the World Forum for Democracy, you participated discussions on building trust and resilience in diverse society. So I would like to start asking that, uh, is it really possible and if possible, how we can build trust in diverse society, especially under threat? Yes, uh, I think it's quite possible. And uh, there are different ways of building trust in uh, diverse societies. Uh, just to refer to some of them as uh, possible ways. For example, one of them is try to uh, uh, facilitate different kind of dialogues mm -hmm. among different parts of the communities, especially when it comes to the religious issues. Since I have that experience myself, then among religious uh, communities, religious leaders, among the, uh, the lower level, the uh, lay people of that community, that's one of the ways that through the dialogue and conversation, we can build trust. If we do not sit with each other and we do not talk to, with each other, then we have fear of each other. But if we sit next to each other and have different kind of honest and very frank kind of conversation, then we come to conclusion, at, at least then we agree to disagree. Mm -hmm. if not to find many commonalities and similarities among themselves. Now, in terms of education, that's another way of building trust, of, of having different kind of using different um, tools and instruments to educate our own children, our own families about different issues, and try to um, spread the positive kind of news uh, rather than very negative one in our medias. So there are different ways of, of building trust, I think. I think it's yeah. also important to mention the role of the governments yes. and their languages, maybe the role of politicians, especially exactly. on that point. I, 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 I mentioned that also yesterday, and uh, that, that's exactly you are right. And when I said facilitating, facilitating, I was referring also to the government just as a facilitator, not as someone that can interfere to these kind of issues. But since they are in charge and they are serving the people, they, have, they can facilitate different ways and also yes they have different kind of responsibilities the state responsibility is really really too too high in mm -hmm. serving um, the uh, society in different ways to to build trust among their own people mm -hmm. yes. and also in your speech as I remember well you mentioned the importance of the religion because you said that religion can be the source yes. resource for peace yes so could you please a bit clarify it? Because uh, especially the last situations when we see in Europe terrorist attacks, some religions like Islam and Muslim people can be treated differently in the society because of this perception. So how can yeah. European people or generally in the world we can tackle with this issue? Yeah, if you uh, allow me, I mm -hmm. have a note I want to read for you. Yeah. Um, that uh, the title of this is very short. is a religion as a part of the solution. Mm -hmm. Some in the public see too often religion as source of the current crisis, something that is unique to Islam and Muslim community that needs to be dealt with as a pure misconception. Religion can and has functioned as a vehicle for encouraging a range of political actions, including violence, but it has also played a significant role in reconciliation and peace building in many parts of the world. It is obviously necessary for the leaders of Muslim communities and imams of local mosques across Europe, for example, to take up the responsibility of interface dialogue, as I mentioned, and also the other region. And the competing narratives of traditional texts must be articulated and presented. This must not be perceived as constructed by governments, but as authentic self-examination from within the world of Islam. Community leaders, particularly imams, should be encouraged to get involved in civic and non-profit activities which provide services to the community. They should go beyond simply preaching the faithful. Open and honest debates about different issues must be organized in different communities where people can express their anger and views about all issues that face the Muslim in and outside of Europe. So, 
I mean, there are two sides of responsibilities. The Imams, the people who are leading the majority of the Muslim community. And we know that, for example, in, in France, there are uh, millions of Muslims are living here. And you just see a few of them, even um, some of them, maybe they are not from here, created this kind of and problems and uh, created this kind of tragic uh, event. But 99.9% .9 of these people are peaceful Muslims who are living in this society. Mm -hmm. And they have their own Imams, they have their own mosques, they have their own prayers. So that's a task of these religious Imam and communities. And I'm sure they have done, they have taken some steps, but there must be more of that. And then there, there must be welcome also by other communities. Here the issue even is not, shouldn't be limited to the uh, religious communities of, of other faiths. It should be, I mean, to the other communities, even the atheists, even the secular communities. As I said, this is a time that we should sit and we should listen to each other. We should respect each other. We shouldn't look at religion as, as something that we have to put in the corner. No, religion is, especially within the Muslim life, within the Muslim community, is, is, is integrated with their own daily life. It's not like the negative experience of especially French uh, people face in the few centuries ago about uh, the religious fanatic. Is different. So th that part of religion also should be um, um, addressed, addressed more than before. Mm -hmm. Yes. And also, uh, I would like to a bit discuss on the cause of extremism. Yes. And what do you think about the relation between the integration policies of the European countries uh, and uh, extremism? Because one side we are discussing how to integrate minorities, immigrant communities. Yes. So do you think that it's the lack of integration that causes one part of extremism? Or maybe even they think that, or governments think that they integrated another reasons that cause extremism. What would you like no, to say I, about that? I, I, I believe that the lack of integration is the main problem. As when you see them as the other, and as I said, as an object, as an individual, not as a person, mm -hmm. and then the problem arises. I'm not familiar a lot with French, but since like a few days ago, I'm, I'm here and I was in Paris talking to some of Muslim friends. Everyone I talk, they are complaining and they are not happy about the way that they have been treated by, by the, the French uh, authorities or, or people. They said we don't have opportunities for same opportunities to get jobs. If you, for example, are covering or a Muslim, as, a, as you know, that hijab is something compulsory for the people who are obeying the Islamic law. So they have, they have I, I, I met a lady that she has a, like a master's degree. She was born here, but she cannot find a job because I mean, the, as at least that's her feeling that because she covered and they, they don't offer a job to her. So that's kind of marginalization and just putting aside these people. Uh, that's, that's a big issue. So we are uh, far away from integration, at least what I'm suggesting to have a kind of cooperation. Mm -hmm. We should start some, taking some real uh, big steps towards integration. Uh, uh, and that's, that's, that's very important and fortunately we don't have that problem as we have it here in the United States. That I have to confess that. And, mm -hmm. and Muslims there are more active mm -hmm. and there are more opportunities for them to be in different uh, places even if they are non-Muslims, they have signs of Islamic uh, like symbols, but so less. Uh, and because of that, you have less problem, I think, in that direction. So here I highly in encourage authorities and also people who have um, some kind of power to, to support uh, towards that kind of integration. And integration, of course, it doesn't mean the kind of assimilation and the terms of just you no know, forgetting everything, your past, your culture. No, that means uh, as, as uh, your, uh, my favorite uh, French philosopher and uh, Jacques Maritain, uh, which uh, his, his tomb is not very far from here, um, said uh, that, uh, and he has a book called Integral Humanism. Mm -hmm. So that's a kind of uh, human that we are looking for and we have to look for, that we are all human, we are all person, not individuals, not objects. Mm -hmm. That's very important to consider when we are dealing with others. Everyone has a dignity. And as Quran clearly said that uh, we created the whole children of Adam 
based on dignity. We have given them dignity. So regardless of your color, regardless of your gender, regardless of your job, you deserve dignity. You have dignity. And I have to acknowledge that. As soon as I acknowledge that, then the doors are open to any kind of dialogue. Mm -hmm. yes. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Thank you.